So this is the uh, so what happens is that if you look at phase space in the Fourier basis, in basis bit, so v v one on v naught beta naught will give you beta one, and v one on beta one will give you beta because it changes the sign of the one. Part. So uh, that is the reason. So so you have bit flips and you have phase flips, and in general. A quantum flip can be either bit flip or a phase flip or both. So, so if you remember, in the classical case, you can capture the error by one bit of error, whether it has flipped or not. In the quantum case, you can capture a, a quantum flip by two bits of information, whether it there is a bit flip or uh, whether there is a phase. Flip. Okay. So that is the reason why. Uh, Intuitively, why uh, uh, quantum error correction uh, involves twice the number of bits. So, if you have want to design a quantum code with n bits, then you have to look at two n bits classical code. That, that is the intuitive reason. Intuitive reason for what? Can you please? So, in the beginning of the talk, I said that designing quantum codes of length n is essentially designing classical codes of length two n. Okay. okay. The intuitive reason for this, why this is true, is the following. In the classical case, if you want to capture a flip, uh, 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 capture an error, you just need one uh, one bit of information, whether the bit has flipped or not. Okay, so that is that, uh, that is what. In the quantum setting, you need to know whether there is a bit flip or a phase flip or both. So you need two bits of information. Mm -hmm. That is why you need twice the length. So it's a very uh, very high level. Uh, Question. So, I am trying to send you a vector. And complex vector. Complex vector. And what you are saying here seems to be that the complex vector will get transformed. By one of these. Right. But why will it not get only slightly rotated? Okay. So, the why, so that's a good question actually. So, the point is, it's true that any, there can be any unitary operator that could be applied on that. But the whole point is, uh, it is sufficient to correct only these. So when you design code, you just need to design for these errors. The reason for this is that if you look at all these operators, UA, UGs, that set, there are four of them, right? They span the operator space. That is the reason for it. So any quantum operation, there is there is something called uh, a general quantum operation. It's called, uh, the, the physicist, physicist terminology is generalized measurement. So um, the, such a thing, uh, so, so a bit can undergo such a transformation. It, it need not be just a unitary transformation. It can also be a kind of measurement. The channel might just measure. So uh, all those things can be uh, handled if you can handle it. How will measurement be handled? Uh, it's it's a bit complicated to explain. So if you are interested, I can explain. So the question is that. In principle, it can actually go into a higher dimension. So, uh, so one way of thinking about uh, quantum er uh, errors are like this: that you have a uh, system, and there is an environment which you don't control. Okay. Now, uh, the quantum error can be thought of as a combined unitary operation on the environment and your state uh, and your uh, laboratory, uh, but you have only access to the laboratory part. So you have to do something called like tracing, partial tracing. So any quantum operation is essentially you, there's a theorem which says so, so, so in saying we don't permit uh, going on into the dimension. Ha, so we uh, so uh, when you prepare uh, let's say an electron in one of these funny things, it can leak some information to the environment which is not accessible to us after. So that is the reason for errors, physical reason for errors. And all of this can be captured by handling only these kind of operations. So, so what happens so is that these two operators don't commute, right? UA, UB, UB, UB. Ha, so they don't commute. If they commute, then uh, then the two n argument is more valid. So yeah. how, for example, how do you say UA, UB, UA, and no more ha, so complex? Uh, they, they so they that is what you mean by that they define the space over transformation. Right? Yeah. So if they commute, they won't because yeah. you can simultaneously yeah. diagonalize yeah. it. Yeah. So you, you cannot uh, have all the operators. But uh, so I, that is why I said this is just a high level reason for thinking about it. You have to handle one more thing, which is that simplexic condition, which is, uh, which I didn't, which we have not reached yet. Okay, so this, this is the. So, so for, for us, uh, we can forget about quantum 
mechanics and we can just worry about only this mechanism. Okay, so this is a standard technique which uh, one does in uh, never collecting code. Uh, zero and one, you think of uh, integers modulo two. Addition being uh, indirect integer addition modulo two. Multiplication being uh, integer multiplication modulo two. Uh, and then you can uh, see that this is what is known as theory. They think of it as like complex numbers. So now, uh, how do I capture n? So remember, n qubits can be in two power n possibilities. There can be two power n uh, different settings. For the so the number of points in your sample space is two power n. So now, if you want to capture that, you uh, need a vector space of dimension two power n. Because remember, the dimension of the vector space is the number of points in your sample. Okay. So, so the way you capture n qubit system, n independent qubit is by looking at vectors for this huge space. It's a space of two power n dimensions. And what is the basis that we are going to It's state of x, where x now is a bit pattern, n bit pattern. And you can extend this, these operators. These operators are called while operators, because of uh, uh, because it was defined by while. So, so you may apply it on x, it's just x plus a. Now, these are n bit uh, vectors. And you add by doing component by addition. You can also define db like this. db uh, applies a base, which is minus uh, one uh, power two things, which you can see is uh, think of these as column vectors, then it goes to minus one power two. But how is what minus one in F2? Uh, no, no. So uh, this uh, is a complex vector. Set of x is a So the, the it, is, it is an F2 to the n. Oh, okay. F2 is only the indices. So F2 is the index of the basis. Index of the basis. But the, this is a real bit. This is a real complex. complex. So this is uh, complex 2 raised to n minus 1 dimensional space. 2 raised to n minus 1. Zero. Not minus, not minus. Minus 0. No, why 0, 0, no, 0, 0, 0 also is there. Ah, 0, 0. So 2 raised to n dimensional complex. Complex. So if you have a system of size n, basically uh, if you have a sample space of size n, the corresponding quantum object is a vector space of dimension. Yes. So zero complex number multiplied by a vector should get a zero of this space. So what is the zero of this space? Zero is a uh, no no. These are the basis elements. Kent of x. So these are basis elements. Right? So they are non-zero by definition, hmm. including the zero 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 screen. Ah, that is also a and one of the basis. Zero right. So these are just the basis. So now remember that. Here, because uh, minus 1 square is 1, this, this multiplication and addition is all modular. Let's find. So, uh, how do we capture how many position errors have happened? Uh, it is using this Hamming uh, weight. So the Hamming weight of x is the set of all positions, the, the number of positions where xi is not zero. You can define uh, Hamming distance between x and y uh, as the number of positions. Uh, where x i and y i are defined. These are, uh, one, you, once you have the Hamming rate, you can define Hamming distance. If you have Hamming distance, you can define Hamming See, uh, one thing I want to say is that I keep using minus even though I am talking about F2 elements. Uh, the reason why I do this is that in F2, minus and plus is the same. But uh, all these results can be extended to any other unit we like. So that's why I keep to, uh, stick to using minus. Okay, so now uh, look at the classical channel. Uh, sender sends x and uh, the channel adds an error key. So the receiver gets, thinks that the sender has sent x plus e. Now, if you want to know how many positions uh, got corrected, now it's so uh, the, uh, the number of positions where error has occurred is just the Hamming weight of. So, uh, so if you look at this uh, e vector, okay, if e i is zero, that means that that flip has not that bit has not been flipped. If e i is one, that means that that bit has been flipped. So essentially, the Hamming weight captures the uh, how many errors has occurred in this in this particular channel. See, the channel might add a different e on a different setting. 
okay. So the channel might add a different key. E is not fixed. If you knew what the E is, then we can always find it. So the channel might probabilistically uh, choose some E and apply. Then some So let me get the X and E and all the other vectors. X and E are all vectors in F2. So the physical model for this and in the classical thing, character of one bit does not have any effect on the other. But physically, there is corruption, including one bit. No, no, channel can uh, conditionally fit. It is up to the channel to decide how to say adverse effect. It can, it, it, can it, it might be a channel which will always correct the fifth bit if the 42nd bit is not some such thing. It can have its own logic. Which this, this model is for. Uh, so, so far, I have talked about class. So, which does not allow this. So the model no, right now? The E is uh, something that the channel does. So we don't know. Okay. As a sender receiver, they okay. have no control. So the E may, be co may e measure may X and then decide. No, it might, it might do some argument. So now I want to talk about quantum errors. See, now the point is, um, if I look at this while operator UAV, now if the, think of A as A1, A2, A3, B1, 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 B2, A3, etc. Then if, AI is not uh, zero. That means that the ith bit has been flipped. If BI is not zero, then that means that the face of the ith bit has been flipped. Okay. So when I want to count how many errors have occurred, I have to count the number of indices i, where either of these is not zero. If one of them is not zero, then that means that that bit has been corrected, either by a bit flip or by a bit flip or by both. So, so this is the right notion of Hamming weight in the quantum. It's called a joint weight. The same that it is, it measures which are positions where, where AI and BI, one of them is not. Now, the quantum model, you can very simplify, you can simplify this quantum model as well. The center sends an arbitrary vector in that huge space. Uh, in and power and And the channel uh, sends, uh, applies this operator, UAVP on when UAVB is not known to the center and receiver. It might differ on different instances of sending. And the number of, so, actually is coming here. Uh, so you see the quantum systems are better. Okay, so, so the number of errors that happens in this transmission is essentially the joint weight, joint handling weight of the So the, the analogy is exactly the same, except that you need to so what is classical EAE, what is the code? It's just a subset of it. And the distance is the minimum uh, of the distance between any two distance. This is not classical. So this subset is called a uh, subset of code words. And the distance measures how good a code this is. Uh, this is a standard theorem in classical uh, that If you have a distance of the code as D, then you can detect up to D minus uh, again, the proof is very simple, so I will show this diagram. Imagine these black dots as four dots. And then if you correct this code by an error, which is of having weight less than D, then you will remain in the circle. So you will not reach a valid code. So all you need to check is whether the received word is a valid code or not. Of course, this might not be the most efficient method. And uh, the other interesting thing is that if the distance is middle and equal to 2t plus 1, then you can correct t errors. Again, the proof is not very difficult. So I will just use the picture. Uh, take the code words and draw balls of uh, radius, having I mean radius uh, t. Uh, because the distance of uh, this uh, any two code words is at least uh, 2t plus 1, none of these uh, spheres intersect. And so there is no code word in the intersection of these spheres. So all you do is you do nearest neighbor to code. So if you have received this erroneous code, you find the nearest neighbor and just uh, also this. Uh, so this is the uh, so this is the point star. Now I, I want to do essentially something like this. Okay, now uh, remember that uh, in quantum information we should be talking about subspace. So an n length uh, code is nothing but a subspace of this. So uh, a, a, a classical code was a subset of F2 power n. Now uh, a n-length code is just a subspace. So 
So okay. So now uh, in uh, this is this requires some uh, quantum uh, quantum mechanics. So if you have two states, p1 and p2, you can distinguish them physically if and only if they are ortho. Okay. Uh, so uh, what? <coughs> this is uh, coming from the quantum physics. So uh, that means that what you want is if you take a valid pole load, which is a vector. And you apply one of these errors, it should go to a vector which is orthogonal to the port. So this is the condition for distance. So um, you can work with something slightly weaker, but I will just make this as a So uh, once you define distance this way, then you can do exactly the same theorem which you have for uh, that if you have a code of distance b minus one. Uh, of distance b, then you can detect up to d minus 1 errors and you can correct up to d minus 1 errors. So, this, this, this theorem is the quantum setting is called the tail length of theorem. Uh, but essentially, the same theorem which you had for the last theorem, provided you define the notions correctly, can you work this one. So, if you look at arbitrary codes, just arbitrary subsets, they are not good codes in the sense that although they have good detection, they have a detection algorithm and they have a correction algorithm, they are very simple. So, you, do, you have to go over all the codes. So, that is not very nice. In the classical uh, case, often what you talk about are what is known as linear codes. So you don't take subsets. So, I just can you go back? So, in that orthogonality is nice. So, if it is not orthogonal, would it sort of coincide for a single basis vector or what happens? Uh, so, uh, the point is so that there uh, is some discreteness about this or? Yeah, yeah. So, so if, you, if you look at this, uh, if you look at this paper, now if you measure this, you will get 0 or 1 with half power, half power. Okay. Same with this. These happen to be orthogonal. Now, if you take this ket of 0, that is not orthogonal. Okay. So, if you one simple way of thinking about it is that suppose you measure both of these. Okay. Uh, then, uh, if you measure ket of 0, you will always get 0. Okay. If you measure this, you might get 0. Okay. So, already you can see that they are not uh, fully distinguished. No, no, I agree. So, what I am saying is that if you may really get psi, <laughs> if it is not orthogonal, uh, to what is it uh, to see? Then, what is it? It lies within it. No, it can be at an angle. At an angle. So that is also not So what is the relation between the Hermitian metric and the uh, Hamming distance? Uh, no, no, Hamming distance is defined only on, on, on this axis. Because, uh, because we are not, see the, the point is, uh, ultimately I want to get rid of all these complex distances. I just want to get into the finite. So uh, I can completely forget about uh, all these Hermitian operators. Uh, but for orthogonality, you have some. The, yeah, you have an inner product. Inner product. Uh, so that is that is the standard inner product. Well, the theorem, the theorem, the proof, is it is not difficult. Uh, you need to set up the right. It is essentially the same proof, but now that uh, Hamming sphere and all means something different. Okay, so uh, so as I said, uh, general codes are one. So we look at the what are the linear codes? They are instead of subsets of F2 power n. So now classical. So uh, they are subs subspaces. So one good thing about linear codes is that you can very quickly present what the linear code is by giving just the k basis n. You don't have to give all the two power k code words. You have a very efficient encoding algorithm. And you have an efficient error detection algorithm. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, in general, error correction is hard. But the error detection is easy because this is a linear subspace. It is uh, described by a set of linear equations. So, you can just check whether the received word satisfies the linear equation. And that is very easy. Uh, that is for the uh, for So, error detection is efficient. So, in, in this literature, you talk about n KD codes, n is the length of the code, k is the number, the dimension as an f, as a subspace of f to n. And d is the distance, f is the n, dimension of k. So, uh, how do you interpret this? You can encode k bits using n uh, bits. 
the actual message is KP. But because you want to be resilient against error, you have to use n bits. Okay. So the rate of the code is defined to be this fraction k by n, which is uh, always smaller than n. Uh, so if you choose n to be uh, k to be n, that means that you really cannot do any error. Okay. So the challenge is to come up with large rate and large distance codes, and you can kind of convince yourself that both of them simultaneously cannot be optimized. If you try to increase the rate, the distance goes down. And if you try to uh, increase the distance, then the rate goes down. And you have to play with this as well, depending on the time. So this is uh, like class. So distance was an asymmetrical and definite separation. I mean, you said distance is a particular elastic of distance. So you counted the number of zeros. Uh, no, no, that is the Hamming bit. So distance was, uh, if you have x and y, the distance of those. Uh, so what is the concept of x and y when we are talking about a single code? Okay, so you take two different code words, uh, look at the distance between them, and minimize over all possible distinct code words. That is the distance. Of so it is a function of the specific code that Yeah, it is a function of the specific code. So among all pair, uh, distinct pairs of code words, find the distance and find the minimum. In the case of linear code, it is same as you look at all non-zero vectors and uh, look at the weight. Weight and the distance in, in, in the case of linear. So, again, so if you have large distances, then that means that you can correct up to let's say d minus 1 by 2. So, the better, larger the distance, the better from the error correction perspective. The and more spread out the code length is. Yeah. But, but then the point is that then the rate goes down. You have to be careful. The rate relates to what? Rate is the, so if the dimension of the bit is k, uh, of, the, uh, of the code is k, that essentially means that you can encode k actual bits in n bits. Okay. So that means that although you are sending n bits, uh, you are only sending k bits of information. Okay. That extra bit is only for error correction. Okay. So of these n bits, only k bits are useful information. So that is why it is called the rate k by n. So that is actually the rate at which you So that is the relationship of redundancy. Uh, so it is redundancy. Uh, so how much redundancy is that? No, no, so um, that's the n minus k upon n. N minus n minus uh, k, upon k would be the redundant bit. But usually it is not like that. I mean, the redundancy is kind of distributed among the all the bits. Yeah. So now uh, the right motion for uh, quantum uh, linear. Uh, so the linear codes are nice codes, at least up to error detection. Uh, so what is the corresponding object in the quantum setting? We are all these stabilizer codes. Okay, so we have to motivate us as to why linear codes are so nice. Why we want to go to a different code? Um, no, I mean uh, most uh, codes that are used in practice are linear. It's not there. Why are we going there? No, no, so that can handle only uh, classical errors. Now if you want to handle quantum error, you have to design quantum code. Why do I want to handle quantum error? Uh, if you don't, if you don't want to, I mean, if you cannot handle, let me put it this way: if uh, if you can't handle quantum errors, then forget about building quantum errors. Stop it. <laughs> so it's a it's a it's a it's a um, proposition that you cannot uh, reject. <laughs> okay, so that's the reason why you want quantum. Without that, there could be some justification for moving to quantum stabilizer codes. There might be uh, you know, a property that we can get 1.5 times rate and no, no, distance no, no, no. something like that. Uh, that is not true because uh, uh, in the quantum world, the kind of errors you have is much more. So in fact, uh, quantum codes have to be more resilient. So uh, it is not that you can do better classical computation by using quantum. So that, that is uh, already there, but what happens is in, in normal classical computer like the laptop, uh, people try to avoid the quantum uh, <coughs> because it is not nice. 
But the point is, uh, if you have computers designed with quantum mechanics in mind, then you can do, you can solve problems which are currently not possible on my lab. For example, you can factor a same number. Provided you build a quantum computer. But the point is that if you want to build a general purpose quantum computer, you better fix uh, the error. Yeah. 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 You are sending one super person. So you think of no, like but physically, right? physically, only only, only oh, physically, for example, you uh, generate a photo from some source. So if I want to send a laser, so a laser, I want to send n qubits. Uh, you, you send n laser pulses. Do I send n laser pulses or do I send qubits to n laser pulses? No, 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 n laser. N laser. But each of these laser pulses can be so one of these. So yeah, they, they can be up and down. Uh, in this case, uh, polarized. So if you are sending n electrons, they uh, they can be in a superposition of up and down states. So, uh, so, so, yeah. so you are sending n electrons. I mean, real world you cannot send it. Some some people argue that that's what they're doing all the time. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> doing that all the time. <coughs> Just when you measure it, you see some projections. Yeah. So, but the difference is that you are measuring the spin here and not the quantity of the electron that you're sending. Huh. That's the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it has succeeded. I mean, practically, people are done key exchange. Yeah, yeah. So that we can discuss that later. Key exchange. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> key exchange does not. Uh, no spin, right? Spin. Huh. No, no. Key exchange does not use entanglement. No, it doesn't. So the, that is Correct. why it is. Uh, it is still It is essentially optics. It is optics. So that is the reason why. Yeah, entanglement is a. So that when if you want entanglement, which is what you need if you want to type the numbers and you want to read someone's email, uh, then um, then you better uh, get this. So how uh, how do you define this stabilizer rule? So this uh, you define by talking about the invariant subset. So you take a sub subset of uh, the white operators. White operators remember are the errors. You take a subset of them and look at all the vectors which uh, are uh, striped towards this. That if you apply this operator, the vector remains. So, uh, so we can assume this set is actually a subgroup, it's a sub size system. And if, so, this is the interesting point. Every operator in S should come in. If it doesn't, then this uh, space is uh, rather trivial. It's just the real space. So, this. So what we want to construct is such a code. Why do we want to construct these codes? Because they are the right generalization of linear codes in the Okay, so uh, so so we want to understand when do wide operators come So you can see easily that the bit flips commute with around itself. You can also see that the phase flip commute uh, with itself. This is not easy to see in this basis. But if you convert everything to Fourier basis, remember that it's bit flips in the Fourier basis. Same. That uh, now in general, U A B B might not commute. Uh, U A and B B might not commute. The commutation relation is the following: that U A B B is minus one times B B. So this is how it commutes. And then we can have if you work uh, out this, you can see that U A B B commutes with this operator B U C D. If and only if this uh, form, so A transpose D minus B transpose C is it. This is a identity in <coughs> F. You think of this as the inner product of A and B. This as the inner product of B and B. And there is a minus sign here. Of course, in uh, F2 it doesn't make sense, but in F3 by uh, So, if you want to talk about commutation, this is the form that you want. And this is where the symmetry this is a form which is anti symmetric. So, what you can define, so, so let me just think that what uh, says. Forget about now unitary operators, just worry about F2 power n plus Think of uh, vectors in this space. Now we are working with F2. Uh, we define an inner product, what I call synthetic inner product on uh, UE as, as follows. Okay, remember that. The corresponding wide operators will commute if this inner product is 
So uh, I want what I'm interested in is computing a subset of the two processes, where uh, these inner products are all zero or all real. So uh, such a set is called an isotropic. So this is this is what I meant when I said that it is essentially classical code. So so if you are constructing a stabilizer code, what you want to come up with is you said set S, uh, space S of F2 power n plus but you also need this as So this is the only extra thing that you need to handle. Okay, so let me summarize again with the diagram. So you have want to design an n k quantum code. How can you design it? You just design a classical linear code with two n bits and n minus k uh, Except that you should make sure that the S that you uh, construct is an isomorph. So this is the only extra thing that you need to understand to go from classical to modern. Then we can put it in the bond in the Completely in a commentological way, there can be in a power, two power two ends, and uh, we just have to concentrate on that. So this is this is the main thing that I want. So, so if you are familiar with classical codes, you can build quantum codes. Just understand this. Does that isotropic condition translate to anything on the linear code here? Yeah. Uh, so, so the isotropic condition comes because we need this. No, no, so can that be stated as a condition on the classical code itself? Yeah, yeah, it is a condition on classical. Code. Remember, these are all uh, operations on F2 power oh, oh, oh. So it's an inner product in class. So, uh, so yeah, so this is this is a completely classical. Forget about quantum. Uh, so I wasted. Of the okay, so now error correction property. So when you want to talk about the error correction property of S, what you should look for is the center of it, which is the set of all vectors which commute with it. And if essentially the distance of the code is the weight of S bar. So in, in, in the classical case, you saw that uh, if you have a linear code, its, uh, its weight will give you the error correction property, the distance of it. Here you should look at something larger than that code, which is S bar. Remember that S commutes with itself. Uh, elements of S commute with itself. So S bar contains S. So you are potentially looking at a bigger set. So this should be as close to S as possible. Uh, no, S no. bar between. We just want the distance of this to be large. So whatever is the distance of this, this is a this is also a classical code. Okay. It, no, it is not. This is the perpendicular, but S itself is a member of S bar, right? Yeah, S is a subset of S bar because S commutes with itself. Right? So S bar is potentially yeah. larger. So how it will turn out is that S will be of dimension n minus k for something, okay? and S bar will be of dimension n minus n plus k. So that's, that's how. So you, so you have to look at the weight of this. Okay, so let me give you an example. This is a classical CSS construction, kind of time, show, which you, you start with two classical codes in this condition. And if you take uh, S to be this, then you can show that it is isotropic. So uh, this will give you a code which is a uh, quantum code of length n, k1 minus k2. So k1 is the dimension of c1, k2 is the dimension of c2. And the minimum of these is n plus. So this uh, one good thing about this construction is that if the codes that you are talking about, C2 and C1 are efficiently decodable, then the quantum code is also efficient. <coughs> so the example of this is the C code. So this is, so let me try to interpret this for you. You use 7 qubits to encode 1 qubit. And you can correct up to one. So how you do it is you use the having code and interval and do the same. Okay, so the classical codes can be defined. Uh, the other way to think about it is that you take an extension of it, uh, a quadratic extension, and then think of a plus. So this omega is a cube root operator, but over there, over there. So you uh, you can think of this vector as a plus omega, and then try to build a uh, F4 uh, code from this thing and just uh, hope that it will uh, turn out an isomorphic as a problem. Mm -hmm. 
So an example of this is at 5, 1, 3, 4. So it uses 5 qubits to uh, encode 1 qubit and it can correct up to 1 error. This is the best you can do, uh, smallest code which can correct 1 to 1. In the classical case, it's the repetition code, 3, 1, 3. Quantum case, it is 5, 1. Okay, if I take 10 minutes, no? I start to Classical uh, setting, we <coughs> talk about this uh, cyclic codes, which are codes which, uh, where if you take the cyclic shift of a code, you will still get a code. Uh, you can capture this cyclic shift by polynomials. You think of this uh, uh, A as uh, a polynomial, then cyclic shift is multiplication by modulus. Uh, so, uh, it can just, uh, for, for, uh, for uh, every cyclic code can be seen as a multiple of a, uh, multiples of uh, GX. So, you can find a factor of X power X minus so that odd code or something. This is relevant. Uh, how do we capture quantum cyclic codes? Um, essentially the same thing, but now it has a uh, cyclicity of the, on the A part and the B part. Uh, isotropic condition becomes a condition of polynomials. Uh, AX times B, X power N minus 1. X or mod X power N so this, this is the isotropic condition. When you write down, it goes of polynomials. So now uh, let, let me quickly go over the results. So uh, we are going to assume that the length n divides 2 power t plus 1 for something. So why do you want to uh, make this assumption? Then the thing is that uh, my binomial theorem we can show that any polynomial f of x power n minus 1 will essentially be f of x power 2 power t, which is f of x 4 power 2 power t. So binomial theorem in f2 uh, is very nice. So the isotropic condition then becomes Ax uh, times Dx power 2 power t minus Dx times Cx power 2 power t. This is, this is the simple thing. So, the, so for example, uh, our results are the following. I just quickly go over this. If n divides 2 power t plus 1, then there are no f4 linear uh, cyclic codes. Remember, one way of con con constructing quantum uh, codes is to uh, look at f4 and construct codes over that. So you cannot do it if, uh, at least in the cyclic case, if n divides 2 power t plus 1. It's not now, such impossibility theorem in general are shown through some inequalities. But uh, this proof is essentially using so essentially it uses the fact how so it studies the structure of these polynomials, how they factorize and all those So it does not use any mean points. So but that's a very structural condition. No? It's a structural condition. It has to, what to do with how this polynomial x power n minus 1 splits in uh, some expression. So this is not impossible. If if t if n so divides go back. Go back to the result. This is one uh, uh, condition. Now, if n divides uh, 2 power t plus 1 by t is an even number, then we do have uh, linear codes, and it is completely characterized as follows. The, the isotropic set that we are talking about are multiples of something which looks like this. G x, g x is a polynomial over f2, and h x omega is a polynomial over uh, f, uh, f4. Gx is a factor of this, uh, which uh, contains x minus 1. And uh, hx, is a, uh, hx is a factor of the remaining terms. Uh, instead of explaining this, uh, let me look at the left hand group, which is an example of ours. So look at the polynomial x power 5 minus 1. Over f2, it splits like this. It becomes x minus 1 times this polynomial. Over f4, it, uh, this factor splits into two parts. Now I choose gx to be x minus 1 and hx to be in from the remaining 
So this have to conjugate factors. Okay? They are conjugate in the sense that if I apply uh, this automorphism, uh, Frobenius uh, or Markov, this will get factors. So from from these two factors, I should pick one. I should not pick that. So uh, so this is uh, any any linear code should be like that. So linear cycling. Uh, so I just gave the illustration why Leflam code is such. Leflam code is uh, is one of the standard test cases for coding. How do we avoid that limitations of uh, n dividing to power uh, t minus one? If you look at uh, uh, codes which are not over f4 but over f8, uh, for example, uh, nine. If you see nine is two power uh, two power three plus one, so the three is odd. So you can't construct uh, f4 linear codes, uh, but we manage to construct a nine three three code. Uh, which, uh, the theory is similar, but you have to work, work with higher The Another important uh, idea is that all these algorithms, all these code have efficient input. So, uh, in this family, if you construct a code, whether linear or not, they have efficient input. Quantum codes, quantum algorithms. So, they, are, they essentially come from uh, Birch camps coding algorithm for cycling for these Okay, so I, I can't go into the details of this, so I just like this as an advertisement. Can be uh, there are some non stabilizer codes also in Birch So for that, we need to extend cycling to non stabilizer code. Uh, I just want to skip this. Now, uh, one thing I told you about is that I deal only with integers which are not uh, integers which divide to power two. How many such integers are there? So I want to know. Okay. It turns out that uh, if I restrict my attention to n being primes, okay, then I can show that a constant fraction of them will be good. Good in the sense that they will divide to power two. The main idea of this is to use some quadratic principles idea of how primes are distributed in an So the proof is not very easy. So it's just that I want to say that this limitation is not such a serious so Let me conclude. Uh, designing uh, n length quantum code is essentially designed to n length linear codes. Uh, so this is one message that uh, on this talk. Uh, challenge is really to handle the answer for Last thing that I want to say is that all that I said essentially generalizes over S3 or F5 or whatever. So what I described is uh, joint work with my PhD students. Any questions? Yeah. Things which actually can be, uh, I think it can be generalized. <coughs> so I am only worrying about blocks. I mean, I mean, this. Uh, so when you are distinguishing between error correction and error correction, there are certain parts of the that are very good at error correction. All linear codes you can detect because it is just a checking of, you just check the syndrome. If it is non zero, that means that error has happened. Computationally, sometimes you may want to refer just error detection and error, but you must know the side of the error. So, if there is some wrong 
Yeah, yeah. So in quantum setting, yeah, that you can. Uh, it is easy to. So there is something called the phase finding algorithm. Of, uh, you can essentially use that to uh, check whether uh, error has. So in a stabilizer code, error uh, detection is just as easy as. You need quantum algorithms, but that's all. So uh, just two questions. Uh, so one thing is that the, so essentially that Frobenius comes from the analyzing the Frobenius operator on the isotropic condition. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, that condition that uh, that. Then the air and whatever. Right? Ah, so, so just applying the Frobenius yeah, and yeah, seeing so what happens. Ah, so that, that is the, that is essentially why we are calling it Frobenius. But more so because these Frobenius morphisms map these uh, conjugate. To uh, so conjugate isotropic. Isotropic. Ah, so that, that that makes the isotropic condition slightly easier to handle. So that's one. And the second thing is that now, you know, a lot of these, for example, these uh, cyclic codes really came about because the implementation of a cyclic shift is easy in hardware. Right? So there is some, you know, physical notion why we, we consider cyclic code, right? So is there, you know, does the, you know, the right shape or the left shape make sense in, in the, and is it, I mean, and what are the physical constraints of a quantum system? Uh, or rather attribute features or bugs or whatever which which may call different coding you know properties may become more easy and less easy right so, so you understand what I'm saying yeah 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 so honestly I, I don't know okay. uh, but um, I, I mean cyclic shift is not difficult it's just see if you have n electrons you just rename them that's, that's. if you have n electrons coming like this you just shift them no, but that also means holding them and so on, right? Yeah, so that challenge is always there. Ha, but is it, I mean, why in the, in the case of in the case of hardware, on the normal way, you know, a buffer is very easy to implement a shift, right? Uh, in, in quantum uh, world, these are all challenges. So even the buffering is challenging. Yeah, because quantum memory are volatile, quite volatile as compared to... Uh, Correct, so then in that case, then the, you know, the shift as a basis, maybe you need more local... Uh, I mean, the mechanics of it may call for different attributes of the code. Hmm? Yeah, I, I don't really I, I know how, what kind of hard. So the point is, currently the situation is that uh, uh, quantum circuits are not uh, really uh, So the best we know is that 3 times 5 is 50 with high power. Yes. So that is the kind of factoring that we have done. So I really don't know what is the but uh, I think in laser technology, I have been talking to some people. In laser uh, world, some things are easy. For example, things that you do in Fourier basis. Apparently, that is easy. Uh, they can handle it. I don't know the details. So I really don't understand. You're talking about error, doing transmission or request. But when you apply it, what is they to use it? So, that is the fault tolerance. Right? So the, the error correcting algorithm itself is a quantum circuit, which might be there. So there is some work uh, in those areas. So uh, there are uh, work so, uh, I don't know, uh, which essentially talks about this. So I am not that familiar. With it. Essentially, what they say is that um, uh, if you can bring the threshold of error uh, below a constant, some constant which is like one by thousand, then you can do uh, feasible quantum. So, uh, they use quantum error correcting codes. Uh, for bootstrap. Bootstrap. That is it. <coughs> so, the isotropic condition, does that have any benefit in the classical setting? Uh, like you can get better correction algorithm. I, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think, uh, I don't think you can use a quantum code as a, as a, I don't think the kind of errors are different that you can. No, but it's still a classical code, right? Uh, it, uh, I, yeah, pay, so pay see, for example, uh, if you want to correct one uh, error, the smallest uh, classical code is a repetition. Right? Like the yeah, so it may won't be the smallest, but maybe correction is easier or something. I don't think. I in the quantum setting, you need at least five people. So that, that it is unlikely. 